Every year in the United States, consumers use literally billions of plastic bottles just like this. But after you toss it into the recycle bin, do you ever wonder where it goes? Well, about 20% of those bottles end up right here at Carbon Light Industries. This is the largest facility of its kind here in the United States. And Leon, the chairman, how you doing? Hi, how are you? Nice meeting you. Good, you're gonna take us Good. on a tour. Show yeah, us around, yeah? Definitely, here you go. This is for me? Please put your safety hat and hold that on before we can go in. Okay, you gotta suit up. Suit up. Wow, this place is huge. This $60 million facility in Riverside processes 2 billion plastic beverage containers every year. That's more than 500 bottles for every person in LA. We bring in bales of product, as you can see, from the trunks. They are in a bale form, and then we have to break up that bale. Okay, so you separate the bottles, and that's the process that's happening that, right that here? That process separates the bottles, so breaks up the bale. Most of the bottles recycled in this facility come from redemption centers, where consumers can return their beverage containers for a cash refund. So plastic is relatively lightweight, right? Well, this square bale of plastic bottles weighs more than 1,300 pounds. And it stinks, by the way. Whew. And the journey begins. Conveyor belts, tumblers, sorters, then it goes through a metal detector to make sure any cans come out, any cans or metal cans. Then it goes through a, we call it a pre-wash. What it does is washes the bottles and removes the labels. You can see the labels are being removed. So it's a pretty involved process then. From the time the plastic arrives and is in these big bales, it oh, seems like it goes huge. through a lot, even to get it to the point where it's first being washed. Exactly. From the time it starts till it ends as a resin, as a material, you lose about 30% of it in caps, in labels, in dirt, and we end up with only 70% of what we get in. In the U.S., most recycled beverage containers are sent to China. They're melted down and turned into polyester materials and used to make anything from t-shirts to carpet to teddy bear stuffing. But often, those items ultimately end up in a landfill. Carbon Light's goal is to keep a bottle's cycle of life going. It's known as closed loop recycling, or bottle to bottle. So I would imagine that one of the huge advantages of this kind of recycling is that if you're getting bottles from Southern California, you're recycling them here in Southern California, and, and then they're using being it in made California. into new bottles in Southern California. Exactly. So it keeps it all very local. Exactly. California is far and away head and shoulders above the rest of the country. Susan Collins has been studying the environmental impacts of plastic for more than 20 years. She says California's recycling success is because we require deposits, and the law is statewide. The states that have the programs that cover the whole state, where they make a decision like, our entire state will adopt a container deposit law. Then boom, within a couple of years, they see recycling rates in the 80% range. So after the bottles have been separated by color, this is the final check before they're ground up into little bits about the size of cornflakes. This is the wash plate that comes out. After all that washing and going through the system, this is your wash plate. It's still warm. Like it's fresh out of the dishwasher. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is out of the dishwasher. A sophisticated dishwasher. We process about 10 to 11,000 pounds of this an hour. 10 to 11,000 pounds of plastic bits every, every single hour. An hour. As much as they recycle here, it's still less than 1% of the 245 billion beverage containers Americans use every year. And while some of those containers are recycled as well, they rarely turn back into bottles. Carbon Light hopes to change that, because when plastic bottles turn back into plastic bottles, that means less new material is being sourced. Fulfilling the promise of recycling is making a product that can be used to replace virgin materials. Because when you do that, you save all of the greenhouse gases, all of the production of toxics, all of the energy that went into getting those virgin materials out of the ground in the first place. And the final step, sterilization. To make a food grade material to take volatiles out of any volatiles that are left in the material, 
will be taken out and then melted and made into pellets to be shipped to the customer. So essentially, you have to sterilize all of this plastic exactly. to make sure it's food safe. Exactly. So that is really hot plastic. That's right? very hot plastic. You don't want to touch that. So what does all of this ultimately produce? These tiny little pellets, enough to fill giant silos like these before being shipped off to bottle makers. So when a crushed plastic bottle enters carbon light, it looks a little something like this before ultimately ending up as the finished product. These are food grade plastic pellets, which will then be sent off to bottlers to create new bottles. It could be a 50% recyclable material bottle like this or a bottle like this that's made from 100% recyclable plastic. So with this type of closed loop recycling, that means these bottles can be reused literally an infinite number of times, which means fewer bottles end up in the oceans, in the streets, or in the landfill. So is there really such a thing as eternal life for plastic bottles? Well, for now, this place is probably as close as it gets. I'm Derek Shore for SoCal Connected.